this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate the method I use to cable without a cable needle. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. In this swatch, I have a couple of different kinds of cables. So right here, I have a four stitch cable that crosses to the right. So there are two stitches crossing two other knit stitches. And here I have again, I have two knit stitches crossing two knit stitches, but in this case, they're crossing to the left. And right here, I have a traveling cable. So I have these ropes of two stitches, two knit stitches that travel across a background of pearls. And then when they meet up, then they cross each other. So I am currently on a cable crossing row where it's time for me to have the two stitches over on the left cross in front of the two stitches over on the right. If I were going to use a cable needle, uh, one of the things that you do is you slip the first stitches that are involved in the cable onto a cable needle, and then you would either hold them to the front of the work, if these two stitches were meant to cross over to the left, or you hold them in, in the back of the work if these two stitches are the ones that are going to be crossing in front. So as I mentioned, if I were going to use a cable needle, I would slip these two stitches onto the needle and I would hold them to the back. Then I would work these two stitches and then I would work the stitches on the cable needle. And what that does is it allows me to work these stitches out of order. So instead of working stitch one, two, three, and four, I put these stitches on the cable needle, I knit stitch three and four, and then I knit off the cable needle, I'm, I'm going to be knitting stitch one, two. So what I want to knit is three, four, one, two. So rather than using a cable needle, instead you can reorder the stitches on the left hand needle in the order that you want to work them. And this is really handy when you are working cables without a lot of stitches. Like my preference is to use this uh, cabling without a cable technique when I have four stitches or fewer involved in the cable. I have occasionally used up to six stitches, but it just gets a little tricky to do and I would just as soon use a cable needle for that. So I'm actually about to work this cable row here. I'm going to do a right crossing cable for here. I'm going to do a left crossing cable for here. And then when I get to this cable here, I'm going, there are three stitches involved that you can count the boxes, one, two, three. And you can see that these diagonal lines here are framing these two knit stitches. So these two knit stitches are going to cross in front of this single purl stitch. And over here where I have these two knit stitches right here are going to cross in front of that particular purl stitch. I did a whole video on reading cable charts and I think it's really handy to be able to understand how to read these cable charts because there are tons of information uh, inside each one of these particular symbols. But I also think it's very handy when you're cabling without a cable needle to be able to read these as well. So when we look at this symbol, we can see that these are the two stitches right here that are crossing in front. That means these first two stitches on the needle are crossing in back. When we cable with a cable needle, we need to know how many stitches are going to go on the cable needle. When we're cabling without a cable needle, we need to look at how many other stitches to look at. So rather than the stitches that would be on the cable needle, what are the stitches that wouldn't be on a cable needle? So again, these two stitches are going to be crossing in front of these two stitches. So I'm going to look at the stitches that I have on my needle. And it's these two stitches here that are crossing in front. So I'm going to use my working needle and I'm going to come through the front of these stitches right here. So I've come through the front of those two that are crossing in front. I'm going to pinch my work under the needle and I'm gonna let these other two stitches come off like that. 
and I pull my left needle out of, so this left needle isn't in any of the stitches, and I'm going to recapture those two stitches that are off the needle. I'm putting them through just like that, and now I can cross those in front and place them on the needle. So now I have reordered the stitches. I've got stitch three, four, one, two, just like that's the order that I want to work them in. And now I can do that. I can just knit across those stitches. Oops, I got something snagged there. There we go. When I come to this cable, this time it's the first two stitches that are crossing in front. Those would be the two stitches that would be on a cable needle and held to the front, while the second two stitches are the ones that are crossing behind. So this time I take my working needle and I bring it behind because those two stitches are crossing behind. And I bring the working needle up between those stitches. So I bring it in front so that once again I can enter those stitches as if to purl. So I'm coming through the fronts of those stitches. And again I'm going to pinch pinch the fabric while I let I pull the left hand needle out of all four of those stitches. And now I bring this in front to capture those because these are the ones that are going to be in front. And then I can place those on the left hand needle and I can see by comparing what I've done to what I've already have that they are going to be crossing in the correct way and now I can knit them. So now I'm going to work three purl stitches and then it will be time for another cable cross and this time I'm going to have a right crossing cable where two knits are crossing over one purl. So I work my three purl stitches and what you see is I have the two knits and the purl. The purl is right in this position, it correlates to this right here. This is what I currently have on my needles right now and this is what I'm about to do. These two knit stitches are crossing in front so again I bring my working needle to the front to capture those two stitches going through both of them as if to purl. I pinch the fabric, I let, I let the stitch come off of the needle, come, pull it out of all three stitches and I'm bringing this around to the back to capture that purl and then I put the knit stitches back on the needle. Now I can work them as they present. So I've got a knit, a knit stitch, another knit stitch, and then I have that purl that's crossing in back. And now I'm in the situation where these two knit stitches are crossing this purl. And the purl is always crossing behind. The knits are always traveling on top. And because the purl is crossing behind, I bring my working needle to the back in order to insert through that purl stitch as if to purl. I'm pushing up against the needle as I slide the, the left needle out swing around to the front to recapture those stitches and then I can put that purl stitch back on the needle. Now you notice that I have my yarn in back here and so now I need to move it in front to purl. Let me show you how I can work that slightly differently. The stitches that are over on the left are going to be the stitches that get worked first. So if I know I'm going to be working a purl stitch first, I can move my yarn to the front to begin with. Then I can capture that purl stitch, pop off, put them on, and when I put this stitch on the needle, I'm already in position to purl and I can just go ahead and purl. It saves one little tiny step. Again, if you don't remember to do that, it's okay. You can just put it on the left needle, take the right needle out, move the yarn, and then work the purl stitch. 
Some knitters may immediately see the convenience of cabling without a cable needle, while others don't understand the desire to eliminate the cable needle. My old knitting style involved using long straight needles with the right hand needle anchored at the junction of my hip and thigh. I could hold the left hand needle in parallel with the cable needle. My right hand handled the yarn while I touched the working needle but wasn't holding it. All the work of knitting cables was evenly distributed, so using a cable needle was very efficient and I saw no benefit to cabling without one. When I eventually converted to knitting continental, I found using a cable needle frustrating because my left hand was holding a knitting needle, the working yarn, and the cable needle. I was even more frustrated when working traveling cables because the yarn had to shift position from the back to the front when switching between knits and purls, and I had to do so while staying out of the way of the cable needle. It was then that I found cabling without a cable needle to be beneficial to me. Just like other knitting techniques, there are multiple ways of getting to the same end point when it comes to cabling without a cable needle. The method I showed you today is not the only method of cabling without a cable needle. Experiment with different methods to find out which method you prefer. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group. Rocks, rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.